Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Pastor Tyrone P. Jones IV, and I want to welcome you to First Baptist Church of Guilford, House of Faith, where we believe in preaching, teaching, reaching, and healing. Our director of music has come up with a song that says we are gathered to worship him, to lift up our voices in praise. We're glad you have joined us in celebration to God Almighty, wonderful Savior, Lord of Lord, to him who is the King of Kings. We welcome you to First Baptist Church. Thank you for coming today. God be praised. This service is a service designed so that we can worship the Lord to get the word and go out to serve. Thank you for joining us today. Come on back and see us anytime. But right now, let's get ready to go into worship. God will continue to bless you and give you what you stand in here. Let's give them another hand. Amen. And listen, if you're out there and you want to be a part, come on. Come on. We got room for you. We're going to give you the instruments too. Amen. Let you play. Amen as well. God is so good. There is a word from the Lord. That word is found in the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel chapter 18. I want to read in your hearing verses 1 through 8. In your own personal private time with God, I would that you would read chapters 17 and 18, which make up the context of this message. Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. Are you there? Amen. If not, look on with somebody. Here begins the reading of God's word. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. Finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come back and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly, However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may have your seats. Ask your summa posture of prayers for the next few moments that are mine to share. I want to talk about push until it pays off. Tell a neighbor, push until it pays off. One more time for the Holy Spirit. Push until it pays off. That's what I want to preach. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come this morning grateful and thankful for another opportunity to stand and expound upon the rich truths of your word. Ask, Lord God, that you would be in the midst of this service. Thank you for what you did at the early service. Be in this worship experience, Lord, and move in such a way, Lord God, that hearts, minds, and spirits might be changed and might be moved, Lord God, to follow the dictates of your word. God, we love you, adore you, and we bless you now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Push until it pays off. 
Beloved, all of us have heard the acronym of for push. That's pray until something, you got it, happens. Pray until something happens. And that acronym is true. We ought to pray until something happens. But I believe that the Lord is challenging us to go beyond the normal uh, dictates of praying until something happens. Not only should we pray until something happens, but we should push to keep going until what happens starts to pay off. Till it starts to pay off. In fact, beloved, when we do that, we begin to put ourselves in a posture and in a position where we're not looking for the happening, but we're looking for the payoff. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking for more than just happenings or happenstance or things just taking place on the exterior. I'm looking for the grand payoff that is to come for every believer. Have you ever heard the saying that serving the Lord will pay off after a while? And so after a while, I'm looking for that payoff. And so here, the parable is preceded by an eschatological statement. That's a statement of hope. To, from Jesus to the Pharisees. So when you go back to Luke's gospel, chapter 17, look at verses 20 and 21. tells us right here, amen, that once on being asked by the Pharisees, verse 20, the kingdom of God, when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, watch it, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed, nor will people say, here it is. Or there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst. Then he said to his disciples, now he breaks it down for the Pharisees, and then he goes to the people that are around him, closest to him, the disciples. He said, the time is coming where you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, but you will not see it. Verse 23 says, people will tell you, there he is, or here he is, do not go running off after them. See, no man knows the day or the hour when the Lord will return. The only thing about the return that we know for certain is that he's coming back. And anybody know that Jesus is on his way back? Jesus is coming back for his church. And so he says, when people say that I'm coming back or I'm here or I'm over there, he said, don't go running after those people. Don't worry about them. Just be ready for my return. In fact, nudge your neighbor early in the sermon and say, be ready for his return. In fact, the greater question to ask is, are you ready for his return? Amen. And so he's saying to his disciples, don't run after them. Verse 24, for the Son of Man in his day will be like lightning which flashes and lights up the sky from one end to the other. But first, he who is the Christ must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. So Jesus begins to expound and share with all of the disciples that are around him, listen, don't go running after what people may say about my return. Just be ready in the interim. And when you keep looking at Luke 17, Jesus begins to talk about after this generation being rejected of this generation based upon the fact that he is returning. He says it's going to be like the kingdom of God is going to be like the day of the Lord during the time of Noah where people were given in to marriage and people were given in to celebrating and drinking and doing all manner of things on their own. But then all of a sudden, after Noah was preparing the people for the coming of the rain that they had never seen before, it was there that the Lord brought in the rains that brought in the floods, and they were caught unawares. He also reminds them, beloved, of the fact that it's also going to be not only like the days of Noah, but it's going to be like the time of Lot. And Jesus said on that day there will be people that will be given and taken in with eating and drinking with one another, buying things and selling properties and the like. And then all of a sudden, 
like in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot left Sodom and Gomorrah, it is there that fire and brimstone rained down from heaven. And the people were caught unawares because they were not ready for what was taking place. And so Jesus gives them a reminder in this eschatological hope that we have to hold on to that. So then, beloved, what's remarkable about the words of our Christ in this, this time of him talking about his return, what's remarkable is I believe that the Lord is saying to us in this day and time, don't get distracted about when I'm going to return, but be ready when I return to go back with me. Okay, five people clapped on that. See, see, a lot of people are getting distracted by what's happening around the world, things that are taking place. And listen, we are to pray with our brothers and sisters when they go through atrocities. We are to pray with our brothers and sisters when things happen that are deplorable around the world. But we should not be distracted and we should not be caught off guard as to all the things that are taking place. All of these things must take place before the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, Grandma used to say time is winding up. And the sun is soon to go down. And we've got to be ready, beloved. We don't know the day nor the hour in which the Lord will return, but we must be ready for his return. So don't be distracted by the fact that they're trying to dictate when I'm going to return, that I'm over here, I'm over there. Just be ready when I come back. In the meantime, we, like Jesus, must go through some things. We must suffer some things. We got to keep pushing through and waiting on the big payoff. Amen. Got to keep pushing through. Tell your neighbor, keep pushing through. So question is, how, Pastor Jones, did I keep pushing toward promise and payoff in the face of certain peril, meaning suffering and death? How do I keep pushing toward promise and payoff in the midst of the delay of the coming of paradise? How do I keep pushing? I'm so glad you asked. Jesus gives us a glimpse of this when we go back to chapter 18 of Luke's gospel. Look at verse 1 of Luke 18. Verse 1 of Luke 18 says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should, watch it, always pray and not give up. Now, as your neighbor say, you got to always pray. See, I ain't going to do all the talking. Y'all going to talk back to me today. Amen. Hey, always pray and don't give up. I, I don't know who needed to hear that, but that's what the Lord wants to share with you while you're pushing your way through and you're waiting on the big payoff. You've got to keep pushing, but you've got to continue to always pray and not give up. Tell the neighbor, don't give up. Greater days are on the way. Don't give up. Here it is. As you are feeling and facing peril and waiting on paradise, you got to push until the payoff comes. And, and this morning I talked about what that means and what that looks like is what I call prayer plus. Tell a neighbor prayer plus. Prayer plus. What is prayer plus, Pastor Jones? Well, I talked about multivitamins this morning. I talked about the fact that when you take multivitamins, these are extra vitamins that we take to make us big and strong. Some of the kids know some of the Flintstone uh, vitamins that y'all are supposed to take. Amen. They make, make you healthy and strong individuals. Some of y'all know about some of the other vitamins that you're supposed to take in order to make you strong and healthy because when you take vitamins and you eat a balanced diet, amen, and you exercise, amen, and, and you drink plenty of water, amen, like you're supposed to, amen. Uh, it's going to make the body strong. It's going to give you a good set, uh, a, health, a healthy well-being in your life. So just as we have to take multivitamins, Lord rested my attention on this and said we have to also take prayer plus. We have to also take prayer plus. That means not only am I praying, but I'm also being persistent in the things that God is calling us to do. 
I've got to not only pray on my knees for the Lord to change the situation around me, but I also must be persistent in finding ways in which to make me a better believer and a better Christian and following the dictates of the word of God. So it's not just praying, Lord, you do it. And not just praying, Lord, you make the way, which he can. God can do that. But it's also prayer plus. Lord, in addition to me praying for you to move my mountain, I'm going to get ready at the base of the mountain to watch for the legs of the mountain to spring up and the mountain be moved out of the way. I'm going to do my part as God is preparing to do God's part so that I'm prepared to do whatever is necessary. Prayer plus. And so we have to have and incorporate a multi-regimen that gives us the energy and tenacity we need to not give up. How many know that we can be great prayer warriors, but we can still be weary on the journey? We can be great prayer warriors, but we can still get weak at times in our life. We can be great prayer warriors, pray to God every day, pray to God three times or more a day, but we find ourselves in a situation where we still need the plus to help us have the energy and the tenacity in order to wait and push toward the payoff. And somebody may be at the point where you prayed and you cried, and you cried and you prayed and you've been waiting on God to move in your life but God says in addition to your prayers be persistent in your plea and be persistent in what you're doing in order to prepare for what's about to take place so you got to pray plus be persistent now when you pray we ought not just pray with only the intentions of God changing the situation. When we pray, we ought to pray with persistence that God not only change my situation, but Lord, if there's anything in me, change me so that I'm prepared to meet and be where you want me to be. See, a lot of times we pray for God to bless us on the outside. When the reality is your prayers ought to have a boomerang effect where it is not only God I'm sending up this prayer so that you can handle them and handle the situation but God I'm sending up this prayer so that if you find anything in me that is not right that God you will work on the inside of me and help me to become a better Christian help me to become stronger in the moments of my weakness help me oh God to see my way through and to see my way clear because, beloved, persistence in prayer ought to change you. It ought to make you a different individual. You ought to be a better Christian after having gone through some of the stuff that you've been through. You ought to be a better believer after having gone through a whole lot of stuff that God has brought you through. And you ought not be the same person that you were prior to what you came through. You ought to be a changed individual. And is there anybody that can testify that I'm a changed individual? Because he brought me through sickness. I'm a changed individual because I seen him make ways out of no way. I'm a changed individual because I seen him give me what I needed in the time that I needed it. Anybody can testify, I'm a changed individual. And you can't tell me nothing about my God that would dissuade me from believing that all things are possible through the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, you can't tell me nothing about my God because I've seen how he works. So you've got to be persistent in your prayers so that it can change you. But watch this. In the parable, keep your Bibles open, verses 2 and 3, we got on one hand the judge who neither fears God nor respects the people of God nor what they think. This person is just unruly. He's unjust. He's an unjust judge. That's the person on one side. But then on the other side, verse 3, we got a widow who keeps coming to the judge with her plea, and her plea is, grant me justice against my adversaries. Grant me justice against those who oppose me. And so sometimes, beloved, on the one hand, we have the judge by position, who seems to have the power to grant her plea. And then on the other side, we have the widow 
who is in petition becomes persistent in requesting that her plea be met. So on the one side, it seems as if the widow needs the judge to bring about justice so that justice can be had. See, sometimes, Lord, we got to look deeper in the midst of the text in order to really see what the Lord is trying to show us. Because the reality is, although on the surface this widow looks weak, this widow is actually stronger than you think. This widow actually has, uh, in the midst of her vulnerabilities, a powerful witness for the Lord. And beloved, Luke, I'm not going to go through all of it, but throughout the entire book of Luke, he's, he demonstrates through the illustration of various widows in throughout the gospel of Luke and throughout the text, how these widows are prophetic, how these widows in their vulnerable positions are still powerful, and God still uses them to do amazing things. And beloved, this should let us know that even in our weakest moments, like the position that the widow is in, how many know that in your weakness, God can make you strong? Okay, that's 12 people clapping. In your weakness, God can make you strong. All of the widows only that, that appear in the Gospel of Luke are widows who have had to deal with various ordeals, but they held on and they held out for the things of God. And sometimes, beloved, that's going to cause you to strain as you are pushing through to receive the payoff. But listen, it's going to come to pass. Justice shall prevail. Injustice cannot remain. And that's what I love about the Lord. When we are persistent, God has the power to back us up in the midst and put us in prime position to receive what God wants us to have. So the common denominator of all the widows in the Gospel of Luke is that they were vulnerable, they were poor, but they were either moved by God or God was moved by them. Here's my question to you, beloved. When is the last time you were moved by God and when is the last time that God was moved by you? Let that marinate for a minute. I'll wait. Amen. Because it's important to know that if you truly trust God and if you truly believe in God, even in those moments where you're not seeing evidence of God's working in your life, you've got to know and trust that God has not left me out here to fail, that God has not left me on my own, that God has not left me by myself. God, I know you hear my plea. God, I know you hear my petition. God, I know you hear my request. And the Lord keeps saying, just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. I know you're feeling weak, but just keep pushing. I, I know you don't see as much as you want to see, but just keep pushing. Push until payoff comes. And so it's important to do this, beloved, because when you do that and you keep going before God and keep putting and lining out the plea before God and your petition and prayers before God, God will have to answer. I just said something major there. Don't miss it. If you keep going to God as you trust him and you keep praying to God, as you believe and you keep going to God with your plea and your request for justice that is in line with the will of God. God will answer your request. How many of y'all have heard the saying, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the oil? <laughs> Listen, some of y'all need to be more squeaky because you're definitely rusting out, amen. And the squeaky wheel is the one that gets the oil, and it's the oil that begins to give you what you need in order to keep pressing, keep pushing, keep churning, keep chugging, keep going up that rough side of the mountain. So, beloved, it's important then that you keep pushing until the payoff comes. Now, here's the thing also I want to show you, that in the midst of your struggle and in the midst of your suffering, when you're praying plus and you're persistent in the midst of your struggles, that God also wants you to change your narrative. Tell a neighbor you got to change your narrative. What does that mean, Pastor Jones, to change your narrative? To change your narrative means that I must learn 
to change what is negative about my situation into a positive. I'm going to say it one more time for the people in the back and the people in the balcony. Amen. You've got to change what's negative into a positive. Well, Pastor Jones, you don't know my situation. You don't know what I'm up against. You don't know all the stuff I'm struggling with. And what I change your negative into a positive. Well, Pastor Jones, I don't see how this is going to happen. And Pastor Jones, I've been praying for two and three years. And Pastor Jones, my, my person I've been praying for ain't come yet. Pray, keep praying, be persistent, but change your negative into a positive. Let, let me use this as an illustration. Amen. That, that maybe you praying for a mate. Amen. Maybe that's what you're doing. I don't know. But maybe you're praying for a mate. And you've been praying for a mighty long time. Lord, I need somebody. And Lord, I want somebody to be by my side. And Lord, I want somebody to love you, love me. And Lord, Lord, I've been praying and pushing and pushing and praying. I've been holding out. Amen. And holding myself together in the midst of all things. Amen. Y'all don't want to be real this morning. I'm holding out in the midst. And you praying and pushing and pushing and praying. And you praying and pushing and pushing and praying. And it's seems like nothing is happening but guess what God says this change your negative into a positive how do I do that how do I change my negative into a positive the fact that you are by yourself ought to be a positive which means that God has not sent the right person your way yet that you need to be with in other words he's uh, filing out them jokers that you don't need to be with uh, trying to be hugged up with amen thinking that you need to be with and God is finding the right person for you so that when the time is right and you're prepared and you're ready drop God will drop them right on you but in the meantime I'm gonna stay positive because I'm waiting on my boo anybody waiting on your boo amen amen that's for the unmarried folk out there amen wait on your boo amen Amen. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Change your negative into positive. But you see, your payoff is not only in the fact that God is changing you, but your payoff is also because in the midst, what God will do is he will change you so much so that your enemies will recognize your change. Come on with me, verses 4 and 5. Bible says, for some time this unrighteous judge refused to grant this woman her request. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet, hallelujah, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. See, what God will do is not only change you in the midst of the persistence of your prayer, but he'll change you so much so that the enemies that are trying to keep you from getting what God wants you to have will have to turn around and bless you with what God has in their hand to give you. In other words, beloved, you've got to know and understand that God is making this thing so real that the enemy will recognize just how much you've changed in the midst of your situation. Come here, three Hebrew boys. Three Hebrew boys refused to bow to the likes of King Nebuchadnezzar. They refused to give in. And so the Bible says they are thrown in the fiery furnace. In fact, the furnace is heated seven times hotter than normal. The people that threw them in because it was heated so hot died as they were throwing them in. But watch this. God did not rescue them from the situation, but God delivered them in the middle of the situation. And the Bible says that they were walking around free in the fire. See, sometimes, beloved, what God does in changing you in the middle of your situation is to get a rise and reaction out of your enemies that threw you in the furnace in the first place. Sometimes God puts you in a situation and in a predicament that you don't know how you're going to get out of and you don't know why you even in this, but God says, I'm doing it not only to change you, but I'm doing it to show your enemies just how much I am God in your life. And is there any Anybody out there in the middle of your situation, you don't understand why I've been thrown in the fire. It's not just for you. It's so your enemies can recognize the Lord is on your side. Is there anybody that can testify in the middle of my situation that God keeps delivering and making a way for me? Give God some praise. Woo. 
I got to go. Listen, listen. He not only wants to change you through the persistence of your prayer, but you got to keep pushing until payoff because he wants to change and make your enemies recognize the change in you. But then the Bible said that he said, I got to be careful and I'm going to go on and grant her justice because he says, eventually, I don't want her to come and attack me. I found that kind of strange. And I looked in the original language. In the original language, that, that sentence reads, uh, when, he say, when he says, attack me, I don't want her to give me a black eye. I don't want her to jump up and give me a black eye. Now, on the one side, this is an all-powerful judge that has in his hands the right to grant justice for this woman. And on the other side is this lowly widow who's in the middle of her predicament only seeking out justice, but in her seeking out justice, God has given her authority because she has learned how to open her mouth and petition and plea, not just before the unjust judge, but before the righteous judge that is above. See, when you learn to look past your enemies, and you learn to look past your blockers, how many know that God will rain down blessings because your focus is not on the blockers, but your focus is on the blesser that is above. And I'm here today to declare somebody, I don't know what you're staring down. I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what you're confronting. I don't know what's trying to confront you. But if it's a blocker, don't look at what's blocking you. Look to what's blessing you. And what God will do is turn around and give you a good right hook to put a black eye in the face of the enemy. Don't you know that in the eyes of the enemy, you may seem weak, you may seem small, you may seem inf insignificant, but with the power of God backing you and keeping you God will give you a mighty blow that can be struck against any blocker or any enemy that's trying to stand up against you you got to know that God loves you enough to empower you and knock out those who are your blockers but this is the last thing I want to give you look at verses 6 and 7 I got to give you this and I'm done verses 6 and 7 says that not only is it important to change your negatives into positives not only is it important to understand that prayer plus means that I remain persistent through my suffering while I wait on my payoff. But verses 6 and 7 says this, and the Lord said. Somebody say, and the Lord said. And my mama taught me that when it's in red letters, that means Jesus said it. He said, and the Lord said, listen, watch it, to what the unjust judge says. And, hallelujah, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Woo chosen ones who cry out to him day and night will he keep putting them off don't miss your shout cue beloved here it is here it is see 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 she comes with the plea and the petition to the unjust judge and she keeps on coming to the fact that he becomes bothered and irritated to the point where he says, I'm going to grant her what she's asking, lest she come and attack me. But then the Lord says, because of her persistence and because of her push in the midst of waiting on her payoff, she keeps coming. And as she keeps coming, it's less about the unjust judge and more about the righteous judge above that grants justice in the midst. Here it is. Because she keeps crying out day and night and that she is a chosen one of God oh that bless me that means beloved when you're chosen by God there is nothing that no one can do to thwart what God has divinely set up for your life that means there's nothing that can befall you, nothing that can happen, nothing that you suffer under, nothing that causes you to strain that will keep you away from what God has deemed a blessing for your life. You are the chosen one. Tell the neighbor, I'm the chosen one. I'm the chosen one. I'm the chosen one. Back in the 1980s, and this is going to date me, amen, Back in the 1980s, I believe it was 1985, 86, Eddie Murphy was in a movie called The Golden Child. 
And in the golden child, he had to go to Tibet and rescue this one little uh, 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 Asian child uh, because that child was the chosen one. And they had this demon-like figure that was chasing them in a car chase. Y'all go on and get it on Netflix or somewhere. You need to go back, amen, and look at some of them old movies. And it was there. Eddie Murphy got into the car. The demon was trying to tear through the roof. But the child just sat there all calm and nice. And he said, man, how you sitting there so calm? He says, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I can't say what he said, amen. But I feel like I'm, I'm about to do something. He said, and the golden child said, uh, you know, why, why are you sitting there so calm? He said, I feel like I need a Valium or something. And then he said, you, you, you act in a certain way. Why are you? He said, everything will be all right. He said, I know. He turned around and said, I know. Now drive the car and keep on going because I'm the chosen one. And now really, Eddie Murphy was the chosen one to, sa to, to save the one who was chosen. Amen. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you this, beloved. That kind of went left. Amen. I'm trying to tell you this, beloved, uh, uh, that when God chooses you, this is the main part of the message. When God chooses you, there's nothing or no one that can stop you or stop what God has for you. But guess what chosen children do? Chosen children learn how to cry all day and all night. <laughs> babies that want to get a bottle from their mama or babies that are looking to be fed by their parents know what to do. They're going to cry out real loud. And when babies cry, parents go to the rescue of their children. Every parent in here has done it. You're going to not let your child cry out loud because that child is a part of you. And if that child is a part of you, when that child cries, you're going to see about the needs of that little child. And anybody glad that we are God's children, that when we cry aloud, God hears our cries and he hears our requests and he comes running to meet us where we are. Aren't you glad that when people try to preclude us from getting where God wants us, that God has a way of blessing us as long as we cry out? And is there anybody in here that has a cry in your spirit that I'm going to cry out for God? I say, Lord, I need you right now. Lord, save me right now. Lord, I need your help right now. Lord, keep me right now. Cry out unto God. And listen, none of your pain is wasted. None of your tears are wasted. It may seem like a long time before God begins to answer your requests. It may seem like a long time that you've been pushing and going, but God says keep going and keep pushing. I'm going to bless you and give you what you need. Can I give you this and I'm gone? The Bible says that for the chosen ones that learn how to cry out when you know that you're chosen, Chosen. That's why you can push until payoff. When you know that you're chosen, I can push until payoff because I know that my prayers will not go unanswered. When I'm crying out to God and I know that I'm chosen, I can pray unto God because God has chosen me and I can pray and not give up. When I know I've been chosen and I'm pushing till payoff, I can pray and God will answer my prayers. I can be in a posture and position to turn my negatives into a positive because I learned that when I'm chosen by God that the payoff will come after a while and the payoff is not just getting justice but the payoff is in knowing that I'm chosen and I'm a child of God therefore beloved here it is trust the process despite the delay in progress. That's the last thing I want to give you. Trust the process despite the delay in progress. See, when you know you're a child of God and when you understand that you've been chosen by God, God watches and sees how you respond in the middle of your turmoil and in the middle of your mess. But when you're persistent in your prayers, and persistent in your pleas. God will give you the power in the middle of the process that despite the suffering, you 
shall be able to be victorious despite the pushback God will give you the power to, to withstand the confronts of the fronts of the enemy how then do I handle when I go through my power go through my pain in the face of other powers I've learned to serve and I've learned to live well in the season that I'm in right now because I understand that the season that I'm in right now is not the season that I'll always be in when I trust the process I know that I'm coming out of the season that I'm in so keep on pushing and learn to love the Lord keep on pushing and learn to serve the Lord keep on pushing and learn that God's promises are around the corner and for those of you who have faith in God it takes faith to get out of your situation it takes faith to see justice through it takes faith in the face of the unjust judge to get what God has for you can I ask you a question are you willing to risk it all for God are you willing to risk everything for God even if you come up empty how many know that God has the capacity to fill you up and give you what you need that's why you've got to be careful what you pray for stay right there Gordon that's why you got to be careful what you pray for this is the last thing for real my paper is over amen this is the last thing for real I got to give you this that's why you got to be careful what you pray for because when you pray for strength what God will do is he'll give you difficult situations to prove how strong you are come on come on when you pray for wisdom God will give you problems to solve to show how God's wisdom will get you out of the situation that you're in when you pray for courage how many know that God will give you and put you in dangerous situations that you have to overcome that's why you got to be careful what you pray for when you pray for love God will give you troubled people to help so that in the midst of helping troubled people, you'll see and exemplify the, the love of God in the midst. So in the end, when you pray, God help me, and when you look back, you will see that your prayers have already been answered. When you're in the midst of your trouble, and when you're in the midst of your trials, and when you're in the midst of your suffering and your struggling, it's that moment that God says, because you're my chosen, and because you're my child, and because you've been persistent in your prayers, I allow these things to take place so that the best of who you are can come out of you and you can see and achieve all the things that God wants you to have. See, sometimes, beloved, the payoff, we think the payoff is what we get in the end. The reality is the payoff is the fact that you made it through. It's not that you made it to the other side. That's not the payoff. The payoff is that while I was on my way to the other side, danger seen and unseen, snares and traps that were supposed to get me, God blocked every one of them so that I can get to the other side. So, beloved, here it is. Sometimes, beloved, we got to push until it pays off or until we see the payoff. And the payoff is you got to learn to enjoy the journey. Learn to enjoy the trip. Learn to enjoy, yes, even in the midst of sadness. Yes, even in the midst of sorrow. Yes, even in the midst of trouble. God, you keep preserving me and keeping me every step of the way. That's why Jesus asked this question connecting to the eschaton. He says, will I come back? Will there be anyone on earth that will have faith? Will there be any examples of faith, those that were willing to risk it all, to make sure that they pushed until the payoff comes? I don't know who I'm talking to out there. But there may be somebody listening under the sound of my voice and say, Pastor, I've been pushing and pushing but now I'm waiting on the payoff and I'm telling you that a part of the payoff is through the journey itself. 
that God's going to guide you. God's going to direct you. He's not forsaken you. He's not left you. Just keep crying out. Just keep calling day and night on the Lord. Keep calling. Don't look at the blocker. Continue to look at the blesser. And watch God see you through the mist.